Guys, in this video we're going to do a little bit of work on the Traxxas UDR. So, I've got this hardened steel drive shaft from GPM, and that goes in the front. I've broken two of these now, and it's not really something that you want to repair when you're out and about bashing, so I'm going to put that in. Also, apparently sand gets in the rear diff assembly, so I want to take this apart and have a, look, a little look, see where it's getting in, see if we can seal it off and see what's happening in. That's not too bad, it's got some in there. So how's it even got in there? Look, it's got in here, look. Yeah. Surprisingly, there's not actually that much sand in there. But I'm still gonna whip it apart, have a little look inside the planetary, see if anything's got in there. Give it all a clean up, re-grease it. Oh, it's actually clean in there. Right, so there you have it guys, that is the complete axle torn down. So here's the planetary gears, and there's no sand or any dirt caught in this bit luckily, but I'm going to re-grease it all anyway, there's not that much grease in there. So coming over here, the bit where the planetary actually sits, there's no dirt in there, so that's good. So it's just really around the outer sill that holds it into the actual actual housing. It looks as if there's some metal filings in there. I don't know where the metal filings would have come from, because everything looks healthy. Alright, so I've got this general purpose silicon sealant. I used a bit there. I'm just going to try and get it somehow on the joints without making a mess. Now I've just got to get off the excess mess, a bit of solvent on there, brake cleaner. And you wouldn't even know that it's in there. So now I've got to do the same again on the axle housing. I'm going to pay most of the attention around here because I think this is probably where it was getting in. Oh no, it made a mess! Oh, I'm leaning in it all, spreading it out everywhere. Good job we got gloves on, eh? Yeah, people always give me grief for putting on gloves. But the condition of my skin is worth more than what somebody thinks. All right, so ready to mount this back in. One thing I didn't notice, I didn't know which way around it's supposed to go in. But as you can see on the bottom here is where it's all scraped up. So that's the way that it must have come out. Also, it's got this little ridge in here, so I suppose it wouldn't even go together wrong. Ah, oh, I put my hands in it again. Look. Ah, oh. oh, what a mess. All right, all back together again. Bit of brake cleaner on there just to clean up the excess mess. Oh, 
All right, so I'm going to do the same to this end, and then I'll put you back on when that's done. All right, so I've got it all back together again. Now, I'll tell you what they should have done. Is you've literally, you've got to go through here to do this bolt up. And because it's got this disc in the way, you've got to do it at an angle. But it's got these holes in the disc. And it's just a shame that they're not a little bit higher up. So I was thinking of making this whole bit up. People in the comments, they always tell me to upgrade these. But if I make these aluminium, the load's got to go somewhere. When you crash, I'd much rather break and bend these than to tear it out of the chassis. Because that's, like, if you actually rip this out of there, that's a complete and utter strip down. That is like the whole frame of the car. So that's the last thing I want to do is, is have to replace the whole chassis section. So I think I'm just going to leave it as it is. You know, it works quite well. I've only broken one so far. And it's easy to fix. These bend easily, but they're not really that hard to just straighten out. <laughs> See, the same here guys, if you had a little hole on the disc brake so you can get in there squarely, that would be so much nicer. See, now I've got to use this ball-ended one. I mean, really, I should take the disc off to do it, but it just seems a bit unnecessary. So, I will modify this at some point. Not today, though. Alright, so that's all back on there, looking all nice and clean. So next, we've got to dig into the front end. Alright, so the easiest way to get in here guys, the first time I've done it, when I had to change the shaft, I thought you had to remove the whole front end, and that was long. But, how I did it last time, I just took the centre gearbox out, and there's just enough room to get an Allen key in there, to actually change this over. And it's only like three or four screws to take this whole centre sort of gearbox out, and so yeah, you'll see. You'll see guys, back to time lapse. All right, so it's all back together again now. I, I should have really taken the centre gearbox apart and maybe with the front diff. It looked like there's a little bit of sand got in there, but not too bad. So I've left it for now, otherwise the video is just going to be way too long. But it's definitely sounding a bit smoother, so let's just give it a quick burn. By the way, if anyone's interested in the part number, here it is. Alright, so that's all back to full health again now. The only thing is, I've noticed it's a little bit slower. And I don't know if that's because when we've done the burnout, it got a little bit hot and I might have cooked the motor. I don't know, so we'll see next time we take it out. But for now, guys, that is it for this video. If you like the video, thumbs up, subscribe, bell button. You know what you got to do. See you soon. Bye.